Do you think the vaccines have saved lives? Um, we actually know more about this than you would think. Joe Rogan's recent podcast episode with Brett Weinstein was recently pulled off of Spotify. Now, it did return the next day, but it is now 3 hours and 18 minutes, when it was previously 3 hours and 28 minutes long. Now, a lot of people, including myself, were wondering what exactly was being censored and who was doing it. But it turns out it was Joe Rogan himself, stating that they were reacting to a fake tweet and wanted to protect the person from false claims. Now, obviously, we don't want to repost what he wanted to take down, but it is important to show the context of Rogan's reaction to see how far out the tweet was and how easy it is for people to fall for misinformation. This woman tweeted, I will never regret the vaccine even if it turns out I injected actual poison and have only days to live. My heart and is was in the right place. I got vaccinated out of love while anti-vaxxers did everything out of hate. If I have to die because of my love for the world then so be it. But I will never regret or apologize for it. It's a fascinating perspective. And it's also a fascinating perspective that this person claims to be about love but has the most uncharitable view of people who didn't get vaccinated. Now, of course, Twitter replies are all jumping at the moment they can call Joe out. Several replies asking for fact checkers, claiming he gets tricked a lot by a lot of accounts that really don't seem to be the type of people to listen to his podcast at all, which is so bizarre to me. People somehow expect the jujitsu comedian Elk Hunter to be some bastion of truth. Meanwhile, they're being tricked all the time. You're not going to get COVID if you have these vaccinations. Yeah. That vaccinated people do not carry the virus, don't get sick. That the virus stops with every vaccinated person. And that's how you know it's not about truth. MSNBC can get it wrong all day, every day with their magical fact checkers and people just accept it because it's not about wanting Joe Rogan to be more factual. It's about silencing him, getting him to stop talking about perspectives that make them uncomfortable with their own life choices. And it's truly sad that listening to the experts has become less about learning and more about validating themselves. Because yeah, Joe got it wrong, but look how easy it is to go on tweet gen and pump out authentic looking, but 100% fake tweets. It happened to me last year when everyone was reporting on a woke army soldier telling US citizens that they are the enemy. I covered it, Officer Tatum covered it, but then I had to go back and cover it again because I got it wrong. Where she wasn't saying she wanted martial law in the US, she was simply telling people why no one should want martial law. And how easy was it for someone to clip her video, repost it on Twitter out of context, and suddenly the internet thinks that she's the bad person. Now when I get stuff wrong, I usually just leave it up and just pin a comment saying, hey, I'm wrong here, but I'll leave it up to show how easy regular people can be misled. But when it comes to a regular person, I took that video down because you want to be fair to them. And I imagine that's why Joe clipped out that segment on a show. So I appreciate him admitting to his 10 million followers that he got tricked and edited out the fake tweet. So if you enjoy my concise no BS commentary on what's really going on in the world, please subscribe to the channel, then check out my video on the baby being pushed on the train tracks and how the Portland justice system failed her.